If you think about U.S. production, half of farm output is livestock and half of farm output is crops. About two thirds of crop output on a revenue basis is corn, wheat, and soybeans. And those are incredibly mechanized. Labor is becoming about 10% more expensive every year over the next three years. And at the same time, becoming 10% less available each year. If I put you in a high school and you have to talk to a bunch of high schoolers, and explain what it is that your company does in a few sentences, what would you tell them? So, so first, everybody eats, right? So everybody has this, this relationship with, with their food, and yet people are pretty disconnected from how it's actually produced. And so uh, if you look at ag today, the healthiest food is actually incredibly labor intensive. So think fruit, vegetable, uh, you know, fruits, and, fruits and vegetables are particularly difficult to produce. Um, without a lot of automation. So there's a lot of labor in those spaces. And so my company builds what we view as the first stage of something that later becomes Wally. And that is a small mobile robot that's used to help people produce some of the healthiest food on the planet far more productively than they might otherwise do without automation. But who is that uh, utilizes these robots, if you like? Um, a typical user of our product will be like a, you know, six or eight person harvesting crew, mostly Spanish speakers. I mean, mostly, you know, in the U.S., most food production or most labor is done by laborers. And what they will do is they'll set up a machine in the field and it's conveying fruit back and forth in much the same way that you'd have a robot in a warehouse carrying around boxes or packages. So we, we think maybe a lot of uh, work in agriculture is mechanized, but it doesn't seem the case. Can you tell us how in the different sectors of agriculture there is more labor involved, less labor. If you think about U.S. production, half of farm output is livestock and half of farm output is crops. About two thirds of crop output on a revenue basis is corn, wheat and soybeans. And those are incredibly mechanized. Um, so you sit in a tractor cab and you can plant or harvest thousands of acres a day incredibly efficiently. The other third of crop output is what is known as specialty crops. So that's uh, fruit, vegetable, nursery crop production. And those are incredibly labor intensive. And so about 88% of the US crop workforce works in those crops. And the difficulty in that segment is that it's got all of the labor costs. There's an incredible diversity of what people are doing in those crops, and they're all a little bit different. If the problem was solved, what type of economic impact would the farmers see? I think in the U.S. is about 2.1 million farms, give or take. And then within specialty ag specifically, so the most labor intensive stuff, again, the stuff around the outside of a grocery store, the fruit, vegetable, nursery crop production, um, within that space, it's roughly a 65 billion, or I think a $60 billion in revenue segment at a farm gate level. Um, and again, U.S. alone. And of that 60 billion or so, about a quarter of revenue flows to labor in aggregate. And then in some crops, it's much higher, like half of revenue flows to labor. Um, so effectively, if you're able to comprehensively automate what labor is doing within specialty ag, then you're looking at offsetting, you know, maybe 16 to $20 billion in, in, in labor annually within the US. And then separate from that, you have a from a regulatory perspective, but most of the specialty crop production that takes place in the US is grown in California. And in California, you have these very stringent labor laws that are designed to improve working conditions. And the impact of them is that labor is becoming about 10% more expensive every year over the next three years. And at the same time, becoming 10% more expensive each year and 10% less available each year due to those regulations. So specifically, labor is going from 13 to 14 to 15 dollars an hour in the work week before you have to pay people 1.5 times overtime is going from 50 to 45 to 40 hours a week over the next two years. And the, the, the direct impact of it is that there's a, it's a severe labor shortage. And so ignoring the offsetting of labor question, if there's not some addressing of labor, then a lot of these crops will no longer be competitively, you, you will no longer be able to competitively produce them in the U.S. without some sort of other uh, subsidy or something else to protect them. What is the impact, if you like, uh, the, that we will see along the value chain of a technology like this one that is intended to mechanize and, and simplify the labor part 
of specialty crops. So the great potential impact of automation on a broad scale is that you can replicate what you would do in your garden on a massive industrial scale and thereby reduce herbicide inputs, reduce pesticide inputs, gain productivity and be far more efficient on the growing side. And at the same time, in the case of if you're able to augment what people are doing today and ultimately replace what people are doing in some areas, you can have a labor offset as well.